has put out a report that literally tries to gauge what the trends have been in, well, this sector looking at how Kenyans are traveling, why do they travel, when are they traveling, and th all those, well, factors that go with that sort of thing. We sought to take that report apart, and I want to bring you just a few of the highlights here. And understanding the buying process, something that we have been trying to do, uh, the fact that Kenyans have a process when it comes to well, traveling, and they will start off with dreaming about it, then they will go to planning about it. They will, well, maybe share with a few friends, well, check online, do a bit of their own research before they go to the experience itself, book the experience, and then, of course, try to sort of uh, see where they can go. This trend is, of course, informed by various things, including the fact that uh, there are various places where you can look this sort of information up and uh, that sort of thing. If, of course, we can uh, go to the next slide. And this sort of thing means that uh, this research is useful to a variety of people, including, of course, well, stakeholders in this sector, people who are traveling themselves, and that sort of thing. Out of the report came various kinds of information. First off is well, hotel nights, just how many nights do people spend when they go out there and travel? 72% spent at least one to three nights. That, of course, is the largest category. 25% spent four to six nights, while about 3% are spending six nights plus. This, of course, indicates that most Kenyans don't spend that much time on holiday. On average, each trip will see you do about three nights. That's most likely a weekend. Well, how do Kenyans initiate their travel plan? Something, of course, that we had turned on early, uh, touched on earlier. Well, this tries to well show you exactly what they consult before they go. Well, 1% consulting directories, that is a traditional way of doing these things. 3% say they have seen videos which then give them direction on just where they can go in terms of uh, travel while 8% consult traditional travel agents. And this is important because this sort of business has tended to be in certain places and not others, thus denying some a chance to be able to look at uh, some of those options. 15% talk to online agents, and this is a sector that is now growing with, well, the creation of various uh, uh, platforms that enable people to interact at that level. While 27%, quite a large number, turn to uh, search engines. For example, a lot of people will Google their destinations before they do go to travel. And this, of course, enables them to get various things like reviews, additional details, and that sort of thing. The largest category, 35%, this consults social media. This will either be Facebook. Uh, they will, of course, uh, get WhatsApp uh, from their friends on the various holidays that they have been on. They will look at friends' pictures. They will look at various uh, things where these sorts of messages have been dumped down, cracked in s small little bits that they can assimilate without having to digest a lot of material. 11%, again, a somewhat large category, looking at these through blogs. This, of course, is important because it tells you how Kenyans will interact with these and other kinds of information. Well, to help us digest that report now, I, of course, have my guests here in the studio, a group of three. Uh, we start off with uh, Valma Kiyomesh, she is from uh, Safir, Africa, and uh, Munyaka, who's from Bucket List. This is a company, of course, that is uh, full of adventure, as you said, and uh, Fifi Ruranga, who's from Wakanao. I want to start off at the, that end, uh, Fifi. Uh, 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 you are, so to say, international. Uh, Wakana is a company that is known around the world for, well, travel at various levels. Talk to us about what some of these trends mean for a company like yours. Well, Wakana is an online uh, travel agency. Mm -hmm. the, the advantage uh, that we say about uh, being global is that, first of all, we are Africans. Yes. Uh, this is an indigenous online travel agency, the first one of its kind, that was born in Nigeria, yes. owned by Nigerians and uh, expanding in Africa and uh, globally. So currently we are present in Ghana, Nigeria, mm -hmm. of course, and uh, Kenya. We started region, uh, recently uh, setting up our regional office for East Africa. Mm -hmm. While we, have, uh, we are present in, the, uh, in Dubai, in the UK, and we have an offline um, presence in the United States of America. Yes. So, um, yes, why? 
uh, from uh, what Safir uh, has uh, presented, you could definitely see the trend. Yes. Online travel uh, is uh, the key thing now, and uh, the traditional um, one is phasing out. And I think um, uh, during these discussions, we're going to elaborate more and uh, get where you want us okay. to inform our people. Uh, let's come to Munyaka. Munyaka, your company bucket list, it's a, well, a name made famous by a list of 18 things that people wanted to do before they died. Yes. Essentially, adventure, the things people want to seek, the thrill. Tell us a bit about your company and how, what you think about those trends. Well, basically, uh, well, what we do is we, we tell people to move out. Yes. You know, it, it, you can, there are so many, when, you, when you're looking at your weekend, mm -hmm. like your, uh, every time the weekend comes along, you look at so many things you can do. You can choose to go home, you can choose to go uh, meet your friends in the bar, and so many other things. Mm -hmm. So what you're trying to do is uh, encourage people to go out and, uh, and experience. Adventure yes. tourism is basically just about experiencing. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, you, traditionally, when you travel, you just look at where am I going? Is it the hotel mm -hmm. or uh, the location? But now we are changing the narration, the, the narrative rather, to yes. ask to ask what is it that I'm am I, I'm going out to do? Mm -hmm. And when you look at the statistics that have come up, it's uh, pretty interesting because adventure tourism has come up mainly because of looking at others, and that's what yes. social media is all about. Mm -hmm. And you see, when you're influenced, when you see your friend went in Diani and jumped off a plane. So you say, oh, so it's, it's possible. And survived. And, uh, and survived and lived yes. to tell the tale. Mm -hmm. And then you look at other people, they've climbed mountains and, and they're doing all these things. So you want to engage and become part of it. And, and I think that's, 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 that's why social media speaks a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think the research t tells it very well. Yes. It, uh, traditionally, you just had to walk in to a travel agent. Yes. And that is a, a proper set shop. Mm -hmm. And that means mostly you... you you would have a lot of money probably and uh, you know when you're walking it's like walking into a showroom yes just like the same the same way nowadays you can buy a car online and you don't necessarily have to walk into a showroom mm -hmm. so it's the same thing okay let's come to velma uh, you literally own this report uh, the fact that uh, the travel and tourism industry has seen such huge change in kenya in the region right across the world in recent times why even do a report at all well the one Thing that drove us was we've had these discussions online about making Kenya better for Kenyans. Mm -hmm. uh, we focused a lot, a lot of marketing, destination marketing for Kenya has been about the inbound mm -hmm. uh, tourists. When actually the Kenyan tra traveler, mm -hmm. uh, tourist rather, yes. on Tembea, Kenya, um, contributes almost 50%, mm -hmm. about 49.8% percent mm -hmm. of income in the industry yes. but then the focus is you know tembea you know just go just, i mean you're you're here mm -hmm. right just walk uh, do whatever you want to do but yes. we haven't yet figured out how to handle the kenyan traveler mm -hmm. and how to make the experiences better and how to make kenya better for them and this report will go some and way towards knowing that, that yeah. uh, I, I want to go back to fifi and talk about uh, travel across africa uh, the lack of open skies, the initiatives that uh, various people are trying to put in place to make it much easier, much more affordable to travel. A uh, simple example, if you want to uh, travel to Equatorial Guinea, one of the most beautiful countries in the world, so to say, you have to fly to the Middle East or to Ethiopia or weird other places like Paris or S Spain before you go there. How about doing straight lines in terms of travel across the African continent, removing visa fees and that sort of thing, literally making it much, much easier for people to move around? What sort of initiatives should we be looking at in these fields? Well, I think so much is being done so yes. far. Mm -hmm. and, um, and us in private sector, we've been really pushing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is also one main reason why uh, Wakanao decided to start expanding in Africa particularly because we have uh, another platform called uh, Destinations Africa, yes. which is a platform that promotes only African destinations. Mm -hmm. Indeed, um, what you've just mentioned has been um, noticed and, uh, and uh, during most of the discussions we're having with stakeholders, all the stakeholders that are, are concerned, mm -hmm. we are promoting governments and all the other institutions involved 
to facilitate. And I, I'm, I'm glad to say that East Africa has been um, a destination now as as, as opposed to other countries where you have to mention just one destination, mm -hmm. East Africa has uh, a visa uh, with, for the tourists that yes. allows them to go across uh, Kenya, Uganda, and Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And we believe that uh, the other countries will also join very soon, Tanzania, Ethiopia, and, and, uh, and uh, Burundi. Yes. So um, what are we doing is very simple. We go ahead and make sure that we sign up um, a partnership locally with those countries because you can't stop. You need Africans first of all needs to endorse the destinations. Yes. Uh, you know, until until recently, Africans were not even touring their own countries. Mm -hmm. So live around going across Africa. Yes. And um, statistics have proven that uh, Africa is one of the best, if not the best, destinations because it gives you an opportunity not only to travel for leisure, but also yes. have opportunities even for business. Mm -hmm. There are so many other opportunities that you have. So um, what we've done is uh, we sign up uh, contracts with uh, local partners that will facilitate, and we go around uh, the yes. issue. Some of those hurdles, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So later in Mozambique, you can go there if you don't have um, a, an invitation letter. Yes. Mm -hmm. How will you have an invitation letter to a destination where you, you know probably. nobody? Yes. All right. So you bring in the local knowledge. So we do that. We've mm -hmm. also improved very much our relationship with the airlines. Yes. Because, again, uh, we have uh, amazing um, airlines in Africa, Kenya yes. Airways being one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, with all the number of uh, destinations that even a national carrier like Kenya yes. Airways has across Africa, mm -hmm. how do you support this airline when there is no easy visa Mm. Yes. Or easy uh, or direct connection. Mm. So I, I, I'm, I'm happy that this is in, prog in progress. Yes. And we have built packages. Whether the destination is easy or not yes. easy, we yes. make it mm -hmm. happen. I, I want to come to Munyaka now. The fact that uh, adventure tourism, especially for a certain bracket of uh, the population, is a big deal. Uh, it used to be that uh, we'd uh, only see a select few. Uh, climbing those mountains, jumping out of those planes. Uh, today it's as easy as traveling to Limuru and doing a zip line. Uh, it yes. could be that you travel to Eldoret and jump off a cliff, those sorts of things. What's the market like and what can Kenyans expect from bucket list? Well, r uh, I would say right now it's uh, people, people are quite, uh, you know, they're, they're getting onto the, let me say, onto the flow. Yes. And uh, when you started off, people were a bit jittery and uh, you would tell people, uh, come on, let's go and hike Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. But then people will ask you, no, but I can die. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we, all, we always think of the very most extremes. Mm -hmm. And uh, nowadays, and even when you get onto a zip line, the first thing that people think about, based on how Africans we are brought, let me say, is it cultured or something? Yes. We think we are, we are, and people keep on saying, no, that's white man, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. or, or something of that sort. But right now, people are uh, embracing it. And even like uh, when you see, like when you're going hiking every weekend, we do hikes like every almost every two, mm -hmm. two three weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, you even find people who are 50, 60, and trust me, they can walk faster than you. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, you, you can't even say it's it's about the guys who are between 25 and 30, mm -hmm. and uh, so people you can say they're embracing it, and uh, because you, when you show them that it, it actually can be done, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things about adventure tourism is that we try and make create create uh, tourism out of things that were totally non-existent. Yes. Let me give you a very simple example. Yes. Uh, one, a few weeks ago, we went uh, to Mboni, which is in Makueni. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people from Mboni are asking me, what are you going to do in Mboni? Yes. Then when they saw the photos, they were like, oh, so our place is this beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's a dam. You know, if you, see a, if you find a dam somewhere in Boni, yes. to them it's the local, it's a place where they get water from. Mm -hmm. But to me, I see, you know, water and the trees and uh, all those things. So it, it takes people to be uh, proactive and go out to see these places mm -hmm. and to experience them the way they are. Okay. Yes. Uh, let, let's uh, finish off uh, with uh, Velma here. The fact that uh, for a lot of Kenyans, uh, travel has been a foreign concept that he said, we've looked at the report, it uh, details the reasons why a lot of Kenyans travel. There are those who travel for business, a lot travel for pleasure. A lot of people don't seem to plan. It's mostly spontaneous. Mm -hmm. What does planning mean for the quality of your holiday? Does it mean that uh, 
uh, if because I've seen examples where people start in January, finish in mm -hmm. December, get a really good holiday, paid for it along the way, paid in bits. I've seen advertisements that uh, enable people to plan for entire lifetimes to do something on their bucket list. What does that mean for a person sitting looking at us right now? Uh, I would Im the one thing that I we found that we didn't mention completely in the report was yes. a lot of reasons why. This, the age group, first of all, 25 to 35, uh -huh. there's a lot of group uh, influence, peer influence. Yes. But there's also, and 25 to 35, I mean, at least 30 to 35, those are people with children uh -huh. or a spouse yes. or, you know, or in a group of like-minded uh, individuals. So they want to travel together. So one of the reasons why people may do, may take time to plan it so that they can include others. Mm -hmm. But for some people, they just want to get away. And that spontaneity, the, 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 the high incident of spontaneity means also the service providers need to respond with uh, non-scripted, non-traditional uh, mm -hmm. packages or destinations or alternatives for mm -hmm. people like that because mm -hmm. a person like that isn't interested in the usual yes yeah they also want they want something unexpected unusual extra mm -hmm. the other thing for that age group also is they want a lot more packed in so they want to plan take they, if they plan take uh, time to plan mm -hmm. then they can make sure they can find out what else what other incidentals can be are available to yes. them. But if they are just willing, to, they just want to take a week to plan, they want something exciting, something yes. other. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, indeed, uh, we have to bring you to a close yeah. there, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Uh, the conversation around tourism and travel is important and interesting because a lot of people want these experiences, but literally have no idea uh, where to get the information. And of course, as a viewer, you now know and have seen the various stakeholders that are here today and what they bring to the table and the fact that you can of course get that much more information if you do interact with them at a level, whether online or through the various outlets that they are. Well, we, of course, we want to stay with that conversation, but this